Okay. Good morning, Revolution, and hello, everybody, and happy Friday. We hope everybody's staying healthy and safe, physically distant, but socially close. Good morning, Rosanna, Mike, and Anita. How are you all? Good morning. Good morning, morning. Revolution. Good morning. Revolution. There you go. Uh, good uh, friend Scott is on his last day of vacation, so he's up there you know, he's using snowshoes where he is. He said that the snow is about a foot deep and um, he's uh, trekking up and down the mountains and valleys of someplace in Pennsylvania and in the, in the Allegheny Mountains or in um, New York and Poconos. Or, I don't know the difference between those, uh, <laughs> those ranges, but wherever. <laughs> You are Scott, stay, stay safe and get back, uh, get back safe. It's been an interesting week. Uh, the trial is going on Rosanna and they're gonna start defending the indefensible today. Uh, but it looks like all the Republicans are gonna acquit Mr. Trump. Can you imagine? Well, I'm not surprised. I just, I just don't know how they can live with themselves knowing that they're just, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just taking that kind of position. It's just so dishonest and so, not just dishonest, but uh, dangerous, dangerous for this country. You know, it, their their uh, loyalty to to this country is showing by by them not being, you know, living in the real world. Only loyal to money. That's right. Yeah, the dollar mm -hmm. bill, y'all. That's all the mm hmm Right. Michael, they don't care nothing about nothing but the Benjamins. They don't that's all they care about is money, power, pressure. Right or wrong. On the wrong side of history, indeed. Yeah. On the wrong side of history. You know, they don't go on the right side of history. They wanna make America great again. Anita I uh, have you been following the, the uh, trial? I have. I, I caught two days of it. I, I, I missed yesterday's, um, but I will be watching uh, some of the a pretty lame uh, uh, presentations today. But um, I really think um, what Michael said was right. Uh, history um, is in here and, and, and to or will have a view of this. Yes, they, they might vote to acquit. But um, I think what the managers of the impeachment have laid out is the historical record. And those senators are gonna go down on the wrong side of history. History will vindicate us on the, on the right side. So- um, That's what Fidel says, history yeah. will absolve me. But I, you know, there's a problem in Marxism, which I don't, really don't understand. Just to talk about theory for a, a moment. On the one side, we say, uh, uh, history is in, inevitable that there's a forward march, you know, from socialism to capitalism. Uh, Marx talked about, you're shaking your head, Anita, but they talked about iron laws of history. Right. Socialism well, is inevitable. Iron, you know, uh, but on the other side, uh, it depends on what we do. How can that be? I really think that, it, I, I think it, it could be argued that, that Marx did not think socialism was inevitable, that there is the danger of fascism as a, as a resolution to some of those contradictions, at least a temporary one. So I, I, don't think, um, I don't think we should see socialism as inevitable. I think we have to struggle for socialism and not just count on it as an inevitable, you know, march of history. One time Perhaps I the, read... the... Go ahead, and the uh, Rosanna. Yeah, perhaps the word "inevitable" is the incorrect word to use. Mm. You know, because you said fascism is a temporary; it can be a temporary step towards it. But eventually, uh, you know, human development will get to socialism. But I think uh, what we what we fail to see, or what maybe many people fail to see, is that there's a whole process and. You can't, it's not just going to happen automatically. You have to be part of that process. Otherwise, it just gets prolonged and suffering and all of those things. So if you're not part of that process, you, you, you can't just sit back and say it's going to happen automatically because it's not. Mm -hmm. Michael? I well, I think at the time that Marx was writing, you know, in the 40, 1840s, 1850s, 
he didn't really have fascism in mind because that was something that kind of took place in, in the following century. But I agree with Anita that, you know, it can prolong the process. Um, however, you know, I'm, I wouldn't wish fascism on anyone, of course, but I, I look back into, you know, the 1940s, 1950s, when a lot of the, um, you know, capitalist democracies in Europe who had just struggled against fascism, like, you know, Italy, France, Czechoslovakia, they, their communist parties came out on top after, you know, the fascists were defeated because the people knew, they remembered, you know, they were the ones who warned us, you know, in the 30s and they, we saw them struggle for it. And so in some ways, the struggle against um, fascism can be a unification process, an organizational process, you know, that brings people together um, around issues. And ultimately, you know, it turns into a radicalization process. People say, you know, uh, the opposite of fascism is, is socialism. And that's what we need to prevent this again. Now, wait a minute. Now, when I was in the YCL, Michael, I had a class on historical materialism. And, and Danny Rubin and Lou Diskin and them told me that there were five stages of history. Well, Sonny, you were in the same class. Slave, <laughs> feudal, capitalism, socialism. That that was the uh, arc of history, if you will. And that one inevitably came as a result of the other. And that this was the forward march of history. Now you guys sit up here and told me that, that history is on our side and, and that the uh, process of defeating the right is gonna happen because history is on our side. So it seems to me, like you're saying, that it's inevitable that we're gonna win. We should have hope that, wrong? I mean, we okay. should have we should have hope. We should we really should have hope because yes. you know, in the end, you know, it, it will happen. But what what happens in between is really up to us. Mm -hmm. And it's not automatic. It's a it's a mistake to think that it's just gonna happen automatically, that you know, oh, right. it's gonna happen, so we'll just sit back. No, that you know, it's not gonna happen automatically. It has That's to be an organized form to, to change this. Otherwise, it's just going to go on and on and on and on and on. Yes. Well, um, I read uh, a piece back in the day by Plekhanov, which kind of gets into this issue. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it next week. But for right now, I want to get back to the trial and the Republican Party. And Anita, I, I hear rumors that they're going to split. <clears throat> there was a meeting of some of the never Trumpers uh, uh, this week, about a oh. hundred of them, and they were sitting in a room on Zoom. Or I guess they were sitting in a hundred separate rooms on Zoom, and they were discussing the possibility of forming a new political party. And then on the other side, the the Trumpsters uh, are, are going to split possibly from the right. It seems like they're in disarray, internal contradictions in the Republican Party. What do you think? I think they must have missed our uh, Facebook Live uh, Good Morning Revolution of a couple of weeks ago because we all <laughs> said it would be a bad thing for the Republican Party if they were to split and, and they seem to be going ahead and doing it anyway. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I think there is a real re retrenchment going on. I understand in terms of the voters that a huge number of, of voters are changing their affiliation away from Republican. Um, that happened in Pennsylvania. In Ohio, I don't think we measure things that way, but in the states that do measure things that way, that there seems to be a retreat from the Republican Party. But why are they are they going to be now voting for the Democratic Party or are they going to form their own party? It it really remains to be seen. And I think I think this trial could be a, a turning point. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. There's been an 11 11 percent drop, Michael, and amongst the Republicans and favorability uh, ratings just recently, uh, I guess, uh, which is better than no drop at all. I mean, you would A lot of them become independents, I think, too. They're becoming independents? Yeah. yeah, they say if you scratch an independent, he'll bleed, he'll bleed <laughs> Republican blue blood. <laughs> that's what they... That's, and a that's few, they, I know, I even know. a few lawmakers, a few former Republican lawmakers, have defected um, to the Libertarian Party. You know, a third party. Now, if you scratch me, my blood is red, and I am ready to have <laughs> independent. <laughs> the real I red. Voted in the yeah. Democratic primary. 
Just so y'all know, next time y'all say, ah, oh, he's a Democratic Party lackey. I've never uh, registered a Democrat in my whole life. I've always been an independent and I'll be one until I die. Or until the party, our party, is I'm able to register as an electoral party. And then I will do that. Uh, uh, speaking of political parties, Rosanna, the next national committee meeting is going to be devoted to the party. And we're, we're beginning a discussion about how to improve it. There was a new member orientation recently. Yes. Uh, how, yes. how did that go? It went really well. Uh, I usually open up with questions, uh, comrades, and sort of give an orientation, you know, just a brief, now that you've joined the party, what, what uh, are you expected to do? How are we organized? Uh, we had about 130 people register and about half of them showed up. So, and, and then I got emails saying, oh, I missed it. Will there be another one? So uh, we'll schedule another one next month. But we really go over some of the basic kinds of things that our party, what's our party policy and um, our, the, how to get involved. And if you're not already connected, uh, send me an email and, and I will connect you or you know, we can talk about building something in, in your area. So really, really good. One of the big problems before the party is consolidating the clubs. Uh, and I understand that we have 12 new clubs over the last period that are uh, either functioning well or in the process of for formation. How's that going in your district, Anita? Clubs are doing okay in my district. It's kind of a struggle sometimes to keep um, uh, the leadership going. Uh, I think people do get um, dis uh, despondent sometimes. But we have some very strong clubs in Cleveland and uh, Columbus and Dayton and Cincinnati and even the, the Northeast area uh, uh, is meeting again and the uh, Northwest or Toledo. So I think the I think what helps is the Zoom um, connection. It's it's uh, you know the the meetings are not as 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 warm, but um but the but the the ease of attending a meeting is pretty easy. And I think, my, well, my club anyway, is really enjoying uh, the every other week uh, meeting. We're, we're meeting more frequently. So I think- Oh, you change the frequency of the meetings. Oh, that's important. It's more intense that way. And we, we have more of a connection and meetings can be shorter if, because we're meeting again very, very soon. And so- Now, if you want to warm the meetings up, you invite Rosanna Cambron and Joe Sims will come in there. <laughs> okay, and live all right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael will too. Light of fire under those men. Ain't no doubt about it. Now, Michael, the communist youth in New York are, are doing quite well. Uh, having You were at a meeting uh, last Saturday, 25 or 30 people. You didn't know half of them. Who were oh, they? Yeah. Yeah, how we did have they new, come in? New membership meetings. And then uh, we're starting uh, new organizer trainings. A lot of our uh, young leaders are coming to us from um, very important electoral campaigns, you know, AOC's campaign, uh, some of them came out of uh, DSA, you know, and, and so forth. And so a lot of them are coming to us with this organizing experience that they're willing to, to teach others. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, this weekend, we are going to be at the Fulton Houses, you know, housing project um, a, a few blocks away, uh, rallying again to extend the moratorium on rent, cancel the rent, freeze the rent, whatever. And so that's important, you know, it's always something to do. There's always a book club to go to, a, a general meeting to go to, a training to go to. So these young people are very excited um, to get involved with the Communist Party, uh, be involved with the YCL and so forth. One of the big challenges before the party is showing its public face and expressing itself as a political party. So let's have a little lightning around that. The, the party should participate and elections and run candidates, yes and no. What do you think, Anita? I'd say yes, definitely. And, and, and I think we have to think strategically about which races to run in and what's the goal of, of running. Um, and, then, and then how should we present that candidate to the, to the public? So I think, yes, the party ought to be. And the party already is, is running candidates. Sometimes they're, they're candidates in nonpartisan races and sometimes they're candidates who 
are running as, you know, as a, a possibility for the Democratic nomination. So I, I think we are running candidates, but it would be great to be able to run candidates as communists, as open communists, definitely. Michael, yes and no. Candidates. Yes. The president. Polit political parties run candidates. And I think it has to be at all levels um, in order to get our program out there and to build the party, become a mass party, yeah. Rosanna, what do you think? Well, Same thing. for president. You ready to run? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, I'll uh, I'll support Michael. <laughs> oh, Michael I'm not 35 now. yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll we'll put you on the vice presidential ticket with Anita for president. Oh, no. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to be a political party unless you run for office. You know, unless you field candidates. And for many years we didn't. I mean, we always kind of here and there, but there was not a conscious policy of putting our foot foot, foot uh, uh, forward, our best foot forward, our left foot forward. And, and then people came up with all kinds of conditions. Well, you have to be asked to run by a coalition, you know, all that kind of thing, which is good that happened with Tony in St. Louis, coalition came to him and said, run. And, Run, Tony, run. And he ran and he came within um, 50 votes of winning. Uh, but sometimes you don't have that kind of situation. I don't know when, when my mom first ran, first she ran for city council in Youngstown and then she ran for county commissioner. First time she got 17% of the vote. Second time she got 23% of the vote. But when she got 23% of the vote, we only campaigned in one part of the district on the south side. We didn't campaign on the west side. We won every single precinct on the south side, but we didn't even think. Uh, but I learned a lot in that campaign, Rosanna. I learned how to do a press release. I learned how to do a radio spot. You know, I learned how to do door-to-door -door campaigning. And those are really important skills that transfer and other fields of organizing. So in that sense, I think it's really important part of learning um, uh, how to uh, uh, organize. But we also have to learn to uh, run to win. That's, that's, that's gonna be a, a key thing. And there's some elections coming up in New York, Michael, that I think that the, the, for the mayor they're coming up and for city council hey, and and there are some candidates that we're thinking about uh, supporting. Anita, do you think that the party is either too flexible or too brittle? Or do we have it just about right, in your opinion? I, I don't think we're overly brittle. Um, I, I think, um, well, I, yes, I, I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't think the, the, the continuum between brittle and, and flexible is a pro particular problem for us. So I would say we're in the middle. I think we do balance that pretty well. Michael, too flexible or too brittle? I mean, is the problem that, that we're revolutionary enough or is the problem uh, opportunism on your... Uh, well, I remember... Opportunism uh, or dogmatism? Yeah, I remember I had a conversation actually with an older com Bruce in, uh, in Ohio. I was walking in his neighborhood one day and I said, why do other, you know, the ultra leftists, the Trotskyites, why do they call us revisionists? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what part of Marxism has been revised that says we can't be in touch with the working class. Mm. <laughs> and so that's kind of where I stand. I do think we're in touch with the working class. You read our press, you read, you know, and so I think we're, we're, we're right where we should be. I think maybe in some areas we're too brittle or maybe some individuals are too brittle and some individuals are too flexible, but I think, you know, it's all about unity. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's, it has to do with ideological unity, but also unity around the issues. And I think we're, we're truly getting there. There's been a lot of positive changes in the past few years, especially since the last convention. And I think we're getting right where we need to be. Rosanna, too flexible or too brittle? Or just, or we got it just about right. I, I think, you know, I, I think that many people see things too black and white. Mm. And what we do is we see things very strategic. So it may not seem like, you know, we're we're one or the other, or it may seem or it may seem like we're one or the other, 
But I think that, you know, we look at things very strategically and we set aside our emotions to try to do what's best at the, at the moment in time. And, uh, and it takes a skill to, to do that because you do have to set aside your gut reaction and things like that. But, um, you know, I think we, we all have to strive to learn to look at things in a strategic way so that, you know, we really are in doing what's in the best interest of the working class instead of, you know, ourselves or strictly our party or strictly, you know, one thing or the other. Good point. Well, we're going to be looking over all of these issues over the next period. Our national board will get reports from all the districts and clubs about how we're doing, how we're growing, how much money we're raising. By the way, there is a fund drive taking place. We're trying to raise 50 grand. We've raised 35 so far in two weeks. Uh, and But we've got to raise 50 because we were hit hard by the uh, pandemic. And you can't be a revolutionary party unless you have a revolutionary approach to finances and fundraising. And one of the things we're trying to do is to reestablish a collective approach to fundraising. And if anybody here who is watching this uh, would like to contribute to this goal, you just type in donate.peoplesworld.org, donate.org peoplesworld.org and make a contribution. We're trying to get 500 people to give $100. But if you can't give 100, if you can only give five or 10, or if you can give 500, whatever you can give, we need. And so we're really asking people to do that as we go forward with this process of struggling for 100 days for a better world, passing the legislation and the Congress, improving it where it needs to be improved, like on the student loan, student debt issue, uh, fighting against US imperialist incursions abroad, trying to build the anti-fascist front. Boy, that's a, that's a heavy load, Anita. We got, we got so many pressures on us. You know what I'm trying to say? It's, it's not easy. We but we got a strong working class, right? We got strong, we got strong backs. And uh, we're not always trying to stand up straight. Sometimes you gotta kind of bend and flow with the wind. And as long as you got strong roots, you'll uh, uh, be okay. Well, I think that that does it for this week. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Do we have uh, any webinars coming up, Michael? Any webinars coming up on Sunday? No. We have the uh, African American question. African American history means on February 21st. Be there, be square, uh, stay safe, stay strong, stay in the fight. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.